Have a nice weekend. I'll see you on The Breakfast Show tomorrow morning at 6. Don't be late. On 194 metres medium wave and 95.8 stereo VHF, this is Capital Radio. It's 12 noon. This is Des Fahey. Independent Radio News. It's three minutes past 12. And now here's the weather in Swedish. Had enough of that? Fine, so have I. And now here's hello in English. Hello, 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 That is four seasons and opus 34. It's six minutes after 12. And now the real star of the show. And the winner on the People's Choice for this week and the People's Choice for next week is Ginger. Blind Date, a new band and a new single.
against some very stiff competition last night on the People's Choice. That's Blind Dates by Ginger. It's ten to eight. Blimey, doesn't time fly when you're having fun? I thought it was nine minutes past twelve. The Daily Mirror called it a vibrant musical experience. While the lady from the Daily Mail said it was a wonderful, dazzling celebration. Fame. Performed with such energy, said the Sunday Mirror. The Daily Telegraph said, the talent pours from every pore. And the news of the world said, it sparkles. Fame. Alan Parker's film, the critics loved it. So will you. It's at the Empire Lester Square, ABC Fulham Road, the ABC Bayswater, and the ABC Edgware Road now. Check out the soundtrack on RSO Records and Tapes. Fame. Certificate AA. A masterpiece. Hi, this is Our Price Records. Are you bald? Going thin on top? Then try this remarkable Our Price offer. Within one minute, even if you are completely bald, you could have split ends. I don't know why sometimes I get frightened. You can see my eyes, can you tell? Split ends, I got you from the album True Colors. Available at the incredible Our Price price of $3.49. Get split ends, get down to Our Price. Stand by for Capital Horror Time with Vincent Price. All the gore and more on 194. A drunk walks into an elevator shaft. He falls down ten flights. He's lying there bleeding. He says, I said up. <laughs> My baby's always dancing. It wouldn't be a bad thing. But I don't get no loving. And that's no lie. Spent the night in Frisco. Every kind of disco And from that night I kissed I love goodbye Don't blame it on the sunshine Don't blame it on the moonlight Don't blame it on the good time Blame it on the boogie Don't blame it on the sunshine Don't blame it on the moonlight Don't blame it on the good time Blame it on the boogie The nasty boogie bugs me But somehow it has drugged me I've seen the light, believe me My baby now can take her eyes off me Don't blame it on the sunshine Don't blame it on the moonlight Don't blame it on the good time Blame it on the boogie Don't blame it on the sunshine Don't blame it on the moonlight Don't blame it on the good time Blame it on the boogie Hey, I just can't, I just can't, I just can't Versions of that made it into the charts, and that was one of them. Mick Jackson and uh, Blame It On The Boogie. It's 12 minutes after 12 o'clock, and today, 11 years ago, Woodstock happened when 450,000 people gathered at a farm just near Bethel, New York, for the greatest festival of peace and love. Oh, I think I'm going to be ill. <laughs> Some jolly good tunes were played, and it was a very memorable occasion, because even I remembered it. Craig Douglas entered the charts with only 16, 21 years ago, this very day. Don't blame it on the moonlight. And here's a fabulous announcement. Uh, and now, today, we are giving away such prizes as you have never seen. Giving them away before on the wireless machine. Yes, folks, it's space prizes today. With every album of your choice, we throw in free of charge because we're trying to get rid of them. Cremon the movie, the soundtrack of the movie of the T-shirt of the LP. So stand by for that in just a mo. But first, a joke. My wife went to the beauty parlor. She got a mud bag for two days. She looked nice. <laughs> then the mud fell off. <laughs> she puts that cold cream all over her face. She says, "Kiss me." I said, "Take me to your leader." <laughs> Get to your money And it seems such a waste 
Thanks for joining in the Grand Names Contest, everybody. Malcolm Watts of 61 North Hill Drive, Harold Hill Romford sent in a good one. You know the names we use on the front of Kremen. We're running out. And you've responded beautifully to the request. Here's one. Oliver Sudden. That's quite cute there, isn't it? Joystick. Ed in a Bucket. I think we've used that one. And Frida Captive. And here's, here's a, a bit of an outrageous one. I don't think there's anybody who could possibly be called... Teresa Jolly Good Fellow to you. Eke Rooty. And now it's horror time right here on Capitol as we bring you the sound of Vincent Price. Today on Odyssey, the bizarre circumstances surrounding the seventh step. I'm Vincent Price, and I'll return after this. Here's the latest from the World Airways Reservations Desk at Gatwick Airport. There are now standby fares on World Airways flights to Boston with onward flights to New York or Washington, Baltimore. The cost... Only £94.50. A bargain. £94.50. Or you can go first class standby for only £185. World Airways fly wide bodied jets to the USA from Gatwick every morning at 11. Call your travel agent or telephone Crawley 518866 for your £94.50 standby seat. That's Crawley 518866. World Airways. For people who hate to waste money. World Airways. Shortly after leasing a townhouse on Philadelphia's Rittenhouse Square, a friend of mine suffered a nerve-shattering hallucination as he trod the seventh step leading up to his front door. Suddenly before him was a virtually bottomless pit with slimy black sides covered with a putrid fungus. He invited others to his house to determine if this vision was unique, and each wary guest experienced blinding visions of terror as well. Vainly, he sought explanations until he discovered the previous tenant had a missionary son in China during an outbreak of the Black Plague. One day, the tenant was reading a letter from his son describing mass burials where thousands of people dead and alive were hurled into black clay pits. The father suddenly stopped on the seventh step, screamed, and then died. Had he witnessed his son's death? More in a moment. A leopard was spotted in Regent's Park today. It was last seen resting beneath a tree within a few feet of dozens of children enjoying a day out. A pride of lions and several tigers were also seen. See the big cats at the London Zoo. 
It's a wild day out. The missionary's father, 8,000 miles away in Philadelphia, died the exact moment his son was hurled still alive into the pit of death. A paranormal force transmitted the son's horror to the house and that seventh step. I'm Vincent Price. So long for Odyssey. I don't believe a word of that to you. Still, it fills in time. Here's another letter from uh, Anonymous. <laughs> She's given us Terry Wrist Action. Get it? Terry Wrist Action. Jilly Concon and Duncan Frapples. I'll give you a few seconds to work that one out. Just replay the best record ever made in the universe today. <laughs> David Bowie, did you see the video on Top of the Pops? Oh! Oh! Eyeballs all over the floor. It was sensational. 22 minutes after 1 o'clock. No, it isn't. This clock, the finger's closer to the 1 than the 12, and it's not half past. Oh! I don't know. This station's supposed to be a technological de delight. What's happening? And look at all this Roger Scott fagash. And this studio's only been in operation a week. Oh! <laughs> I don't think I can go much longer, Dan. Try and bear up, Jed. <laughs> if I don't get some water soon, I'll, I'll die. I, I gotta have water. Water. Oh, you make such a big deal out of everything. Yes, sir? Uh, waiter, bring him another glass of water, please. Yes, sir. Hello, darling audience. And we can once again with news of the next contest. It's not terribly difficult, so... Pop a two-piece into your telephone and ring us now. Yeah, 
Uh, so the first one's dead easy because we always like to be delicate with you at the first stages of the show. It's a backward one, this. We can the And here it comes. Famous record. What is it? Fairly easy, what? Pop a f- five PPs. Oh, inflations are killing my jingles, I tell you. Okay, joke time again. Says a man 75 years old, he's reading in his hotel room when he hears a knock on the door and a beautiful girl says, I'm sorry, I must be in the wrong room. He says, You got the right room, but you're 40 years too late. <laughs> well, come on, judge, how are you today? I'm in trouble, please go me away. A pretty thing took a shine of me. I couldn't stop it, so let it be. I couldn't stop it, so let it be. I couldn't stop it, so I let it be. I couldn't stop it, so I let it be. CC. Great stuff. Good morning, Judge. You all know that one. Okay, somebody who got our contest right. And what's your name? Nigel Baxter. And where do you come from? Guildford. Guildford, huh? <laughs> I don't get it. Every call we get is from Guildford. I shall have to get an expert on it. Maybe you're just brainier down there. What did you guess it was? Uh, Stanley by Rod Stewart. Absolutely right. And what would you like as a prize? It's a new Shake album. Oh, how does it go? It's... Sing a bit of it. Oh, I don't know any of it. Oh, cowardice. Hey, the boy, really is me. It's me. I am sailing. I am sailing. OK, Guildford, you've got ten seconds to get rid of all your requests, starting now. Uh, Sean, Paul, Robert, Dave, Holly Elephant and my mum. Oh, well done. And do you know what happened for an extra ten points? What happened today, three years ago? Um, no. This did. Elvis Presley left us three years ago this very week. But all his goodies are still here, and we'll be reviewing a few of them in just a moment.
Nice to be abroad, Mr. Mae West was also born. Guess how many years old she is? 88 this Monday. 88. She once said, "This I have heard this one before. I used to be Snow White, but I drifted. Says a man loses a lot of money in Las Vegas. He's driving out of town. He is fed up. From out of the mountains, he hears a voice say, Go back to Las Vegas. Go back to Las Vegas. Well, he figured this is a good omen. He turns around, he drives back 80 miles an hour. He gets to Vegas, the voice says, Go into Caesar's Palace and gamble this time. So he goes to Caesar's Palace. The voice says, Play roulette. Put $2,000 on red. He does that. Black comes up. He loses. The voice says, How about that? <laughs> More from Anonymous, uh, Harry Chest, Lou Brush, that's kind of sweet, Kath Ode, and Juan Tomani. <laughs> I think we've got enough now. I don't think the rest of the audience can stand the pain. It's 33 minutes after 12 o'clock right here in Canada, and the rest of the show is dedicated to Sean, our lovely Welsh publicity lady who left us uh, a couple of days ago, so you won't be hearing anything more about Capital in the Press. Right, let's see, what shall we do next? Oh, did you hear that thunderstorm the other day? Wasn't it wonderful? And this whole sky went black. And God did a big show for us. I've got a recording of it. I stuck my stereo out onto the lawn. I mean, it's totally in shreds now. It's pulped. But I got this lovely recording. Dig these five blastos, stick your stereo headphones on, and cop this lot.
God fab when he really tries hard. <laughs> Isn't your record by Marty Webb? It was so quiet, I could almost hear you change your mind. That summer evening, with one look, you scattered a head. the tent restaurant who was caught dancing in fishnet tights um, in heaven the other day. Nothing odd about him. He's usually found in fishnet tights. He quite enjoys it. I found it a pain in the... Well, you know, the bits that it's a pain in. Um, doing the Angry of Mayfair sketches. Because when you're putting them on, it drags all your hairs up in the wrong direction. Ow, eek, Rooty. I used to have quite hairy legs did I did that series. This week, is even bigger. Yes, by an extra two foot six. And not only that, we've nailed a few extra corners onto it and sawed all the grotty bits off. Not to mention feeding it through the Fabutron. Yes, this week's Kenny Everett Show. The show with better commercials. At last, an erotic movie for nine-year-olds and under. Tiny Throat. See what happens when an innocent game of doctor gets out of hand. The Kenny Everett Show. It's news. The Soviet Union has crashed at Cairo Airport, north of Hawaii. The 1974 Commonwealth Games are to be held in Wormwood Scrubs Prison. 
the, 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 the Kenny Everett Show. Oh, yeah. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> OK, Groovers, it's time for a time check, goddammit. It's 20 minutes to one o'clock, right here on Capitol, and I thought we might have another joke. Say, a man can't find a lawyer. He picks up a red book, he sees a law firm. Schwartz, Schwartz, Schwartz and Schwartz. He calls him and says, I'd like to talk to Mr. Schwartz. <laughs> Not in today, he's playing golf. He's all right, then let me talk to Mr. Schwartz. He's no longer with us, he's retired. He's all right, then let me talk to Mr. Schwartz. He's in Detroit, won't be back for a month. He's all right, and let me talk to Mr. Schwartz. He's a speaking. <laughs> I was chasing your direction I was telling you no lies And I was loving you When the words are said Baby, I lose my head And in a world of people There's only you and I There ain't nothing come between us in the end I can hold you when you ain't even mine Only you can see Spiffing record, and that's uh, Andy Gibb. Somebody sent us um, one of those lovely packets with a peculiar name on, and we were looking all over the front of it, and we thought, Aria Leia Citro Bad. That's not terribly funny. It's a, it's um, stuff you put in the bath, you know, and it bubbles up when you turn the water on. And then we looked at the back, and it says, <laughs> the Citro Bath is a relaxing and decontracting beauty bath. It's, it's German, you see. From herbs, hops, chamomile, St. John's wort, and calmus, whatever that is. It treats the skin, eliminates the cramps, fortifies the organs, and the action of their function. Ooh! Uh, Eddie, I'm just going off to have a bath. You finish off the show, would you? OK, guys, here's another... Another announcement. Ladies and gentlemen of audience land, we present, later on in this programme, what could only be described as... Yes, kids, you asked for it, and now you're gonna get it. I wonder what we'll find out there in the depths of space. Oh, probably monsters uh -huh. and aliens and yeah. things with long, hairy mm -hmm. tentacles and dripping appendages. Captain Kremen, he's so hunky. And more 
Step inside a capital memory module. Miss Molly by um, um, Richard. Richard. And before that, we had something else by some other guy from Italy who can't sing, but it was fun. It's now 13 minutes to one o'clock, and here's a mind blowing capital jingle.
record called After the Fire and a record called Love Will Always Make You Cry. And that doesn't seem a good thing to say before. Hello, Irene Taylor. Thanks for your letter. And your sister Sue and her fiancé Frank are getting married today. But love makes you cry with tears of joy at times, so... Oh, what cobblers. <laughs> this next contest... <laughs> Reeks of evil, folks. We've fasted up a, re a regular record and made it sound like nothing on earth, and you'll never get it, so save yourself 5p. We'll just do it between you and I. Mind you, if you've got 5p to spare... It's quite well known. I'll give you a clue. It's an ELO record. People in Guildford are banned. A little old man gets hit by a car, and the cop puts him against the wall and props him up, covers with him in a blanket. He says to the old man, are you comfortable? He says, I make a nice living. <laughs> when you can't take any more When you feel your life is over Pick up your pen And I'll put you together again If your faith with us away If God can't bring you your answer Dear anyone, put you together again. Hello, Sticker Patrol. 
Hi, Sticker Patrol with a yellow Datsun HLO 148N. HLO 148N. Thank you, hun. Do you know it's the anniversary of the 1812 overture? You bet you didn't. Well, here I am telling you it. And it's 98 years old since it was first ever played in uh, some big place in Moscow, some hall of uh, the people or some silly name like that. So here it is, the original, as played by Tchaikovsky. 1812 Overture, that's the one with all the cannons and the guns at the end and the war bit. <laughs> Think that was too over the top, do you? <laughs> Strange magic was the answer to our contest, and if I could find the cassette, I'd play. Oh, here it is. Yes, Conrad Hall got it first. There's a name for you, Conrad Hall. Sounds like a star to me. Except he lives at 94 Cuckoo Dean. <laughs> In Hanwell, West Seven, sorry, Conrad, uh, Genesis Live and the Captain Kremen album coming on its way to you. Uh, got it yet? Yellow and strange magic. It's almost news time at three minutes to one o'clock. There's a man and a woman checking into a hotel near a railroad station. Now, this is the only room left in town. There's a convention going on. And this woman lies down on bed to take a little rest, and all of a sudden a train goes by and zoom! It knocks her out of bed. The vibrations from the train. Now she lays down again. Another train goes by and knocks her out of bed again. She complains to the manager, what kind of a hotel is this? I'm lying down here trying to take a rest. The train goes by and the vibrations knock me out of bed. He says, I don't believe it. She said, will you please come upstairs? So the manager comes upstairs, she's laid down that bed a minute. Just then her husband walks in. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> the husband says, what are you doing here? He says, believe it or not, I'm waiting for a train. <laughs> Wonderful record, Oliver's Army by Elvis Costello. More car numbers, more contests, more jolly fun right after the news.
Body Shock. No, Caddy Shack. The movie's called Caddy Shack. Uh, don't worry, sir. He'll get it. Kitty Smack. You hear that rich tone? Forget tone. I want the title. Coffee Shack. The man's out to lunch. Camel Cack. Uh, well, sir, Caddy Shack is a very wacky comedy. I know Caddy Shack is wacky. Caddy Shack is hysterical. It also has a name. Caddy Shack. That's it. He got it. Terrific. No, could you just say where Caddy Shack is showing? Pardon me? You know, now in the West End in Oliver London from Sunday Certificate Double A. Sorry, gentlemen. I only do titles. How did they get camel cack through? <laughs> okay, guys. Capital Radio here with the one o'clock news. It's one o'clock. This is Des Fahey. The news it's three minutes past one. Thank you, Anne Arexier. And now it's back to the show and weather time. <laughs> Blast of thun. Okay, here it comes, actually. I've actually got it as well. 24 degrees centigrade, rain after midnight tonight, and down to 15, winds light, and the outlook for Sunday is cloudy with rain at times. Capital and me, we seem to get along so spiffingly, loving all the music that they play. Josie, capital and me, with me tranny and me and life is simply grand, with capital radio so nice to hear the writer singing it as well. Carol King, who wrote it with some bloke called Goffin something or other. And one fine day. It's seven minutes after one o'clock, and in just a moment some of the worst jokes in the universe will be hitting your lug holes. But first, here's a little something from Times Gone By, from Australian Radio. A lot of requests for this one. It's possibly the worst ad in the world. Or is it the best? Dunno, some things are so bad that they're good. Judge it for yourselves now as we play you an advert for Taubman's Paint. Somehow, (laughs) 
they managed to get the rights to sing it to the tune of My Way. It must have cost them a fortune. But now, cop it. My Way. Taubman's Paint. I've scraped. I've sanded back. And might I say, I've done some filling. The walls. I did them all. Taubman the hall and the ceiling. To think. I painted that. And may I say, not in a shy way, although Taubman's helped me, I did it my way. For oh, what is this paint? What has it got? If it's from Taubman's, it's got the lot. And I must say that it was fun. And looking back now that it's done, the whole house shows and the good wife knows I did it my way. To think I painted that. <laughs> Great stuff. I know, I think it's great. I, yeah, okay, it's great. Nine minutes after one o'clock now, and just before we zip into Kremen... That little old lady walks up to the box office and a picture called Dr. Shivago playing. She puts a dollar down. The cashier says it's two and a half dollars. She says, what, is he a specialist? <laughs> Look at me. I'm as helpless as kitten love dream. Stay holding your hand. I walked my way, and a thousand violins began to play. Or it might be the sound of your hello. That music I hear, I missed it the moment you need. You can say that you're leading me on. Jolly bouncy record, Misty by Ray Stevens. We've got another number here. Are you a G M a G? No, not R U G M G. That sounds terribly confusing. I'll start again. Three, two, one. G M G five eight nine N. Are you Blue Datsun? Wonderful. Come in and see us today before six. We'll give you a watch. Right. It's time to wind up the joke machine. Now on capital. Greatest story in the universe. of the Starcore. Today's mind-altering show contains the following expensive stars. Cindy Cut, Clairvoyant, and Sue Flay. Here's Kremen. Hey! 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 
Thank you, thank you. Hi, kids. You remember in the last episode, we'd overpowered the guard and had escaped from captivity. However, we were still inside Gort's ship. Well, Captain, what are we going to do now? I don't know, Carla. What we need in this serial is someone with an answer to every problem. What, you mean like Mr. Spock? Yeah. I saw an old antique Star Trek on TV the other week. Did you like Mr. Spock? Mmm. Did you like his ears? Well, up to a point. <laughs> we decided to investigate the ship. We left the basement where the cell was and headed towards Gort's headquarters. Hey, Doc. Yes, Marine Captain. You haven't got any great new inventions, have you? Something that might help us overpower Gort? I'm afraid not, Captain. The last thing I invented was a birth pill for men. Oh, really? Yeah. Wouldn't you know... That out of all the 500 men we tested it on, mm -hmm. not one became pregnant. Suddenly, we were outside Gort's chamber. We burst in. Ah, Kremen, I see you've escaped at last. I realized I was face to face with the most evil man in the universe. Gort was so evil, he once forced Dolly Parton to play the accordion. You know, Kremen, I wasn't always the most evil man in the universe. No? I had to start at the bottom. You mean the BBC? Oh, no, not as low as that. Kremen? Yes? In a few moments, we'll be taking off for Thargoidia. Oh. Hear that rumbling? Yeah, but I didn't want to say anything. Those are the nuclear engines, you fool. Oh. Hey, Doc. Yes? Captain? How long is it going to take to get to Thargoidia? Uh, let me see. E equals mc squared, right? Plus the square root of 95.8 stereo VHF takes away the number you first thought of, I'd say. Taking into account adverse trajectory uh, patterns... My <laughs> God, we'll probably have arrived before you work this out. Suddenly, I noticed an evil glint in one of Gort's seven eyes. What are your plans, oh evil one? My mission this time, Kremen, is to start an intergalactic war to end all intergalactic wars. It will be planet against planet, world against world, star against star. No one will survive. But what if it rains? Then it'll be held indoors. <laughs> it's too late to cancel now anyway. Tickets were sold out weeks ago. <laughs> I can't stand by and let you do this thing, Gort. Come on, Carla, let's tread softly. Don't you mean, let's tread boldly? No, softly. My foot's gone to sleep and I don't want to wake it up. Well, you better take off those loud socks then. Pardon? I said you better take off those loud socks! You'll have to speak up, Carla. I can't hear you for these loud socks. Gort turned to his computer and set the coordinates for the journey to Thargoidia. Oh, Captain. What? He really means to go ahead with this madness. I know. He's so cruel, he'd think nothing of kicking a Martian in the Chronicles. Well, Kremlin and Crow, better say your prayers. Why? Because to make sure you don't foil my plans, tomorrow you all go to the execution chamber. Oh, drat a -roo. An execution is just what I don't need right now. What do you mean? Well, I just had my hair set. Oh, what time does it go off? <laughs> and so, Captain, until your execution, you are my guest on this ship. You can't escape, so you're free to roam around. He flicked a switch with one of his spikes green fingers, and the ship went into Mega Drive. Tell me, Gort, if your plan is to destroy the whole universe, what's the point in that? So I can claim on the insurance. Oh, I see. <laughs> Later on in our quarters... Well, Carla, tomorrow we die. Oh, Captain. Huh? I was just thinking of the first time we ever met. An unforgettable occasion, huh? I'm so glad you remember it, too. Remember what? The first time we met. Oh, yeah. It was so romantic. You put your hand on my knee. Mm. Can you remember what I said? Heavens above. And it was. <laughs> Over in a corner, Doc was fiddling with his pocket-sized computer. <laughs> Well, Doc, did your computer come up with an answer to our problem? No, but it filled up 20 seconds of the episode. <laughs> Dear listeners, he may seem thick to you, but since he invented the rearview mirror, he's never looked back. Hey, Captain, look! What? The door's opening! <laughs>
Wait a minute. That wasn't the sound of a door. Sorry, Captain. I'm the replacement sound effects man. The regular sound effect man's away on holiday. On holiday, huh? Where's he gone? Away. Away, huh? I know it well. Carlo and I went there last year. Really? Did it rain? Did what rain? How should I know? You were the one who went there, not me. What will happen next? Tune in on Monday and find out in Kremen of the Star Corps.